Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Time to take that walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Look at this monster bottle. <laughs> this is probably going to be a nice tasty treat. This is Gun Hill Brewing Company and these guys are out of the Bronx, New York. This is their barrel aged version of the Void of Light. Guys, I've done the regular, Rico sent me the regular version, the Void of Light. This is the huge barrel, bourbon barrel aged uh, Void of Light. And uh, 750 milliliter bottle, great big bottle, and uh, very limited release. It says seasonal here, barrel age, void of light stout, uh, bottled on 4617, and all this is handwritten on the label. Very time consuming for these guys to do that. Uh, and on the back, it's got the government warning. And here it's got a place for the ABV, IBUs, and the SRM, and they're blank. It's keep cold, 750 milliliter. So unite and make, make life a declaration. So, uh, and I enjoyed the ones he did send uh, from Gun Hill before. Uh, this should be a big treat, like I said. Anything that's bourbon barrel aged. This comes in. It's not huge. Uh, he sent a note with this. Uh, Rico sent a note with this saying 7.9% uh, foreign export stout. Well, aged in Long Island Spirits bourbon barrels. The three main beer sites, which is the three that I use. He noticed which three I use. The list this is 8.1%. Probably was the previous vintages. Uh, I don't, it's got 7.9 on the label over here, and that's what he has got written on here too. So, this particular edition is 7.1, where Ray Beer has it at 8.1, and Beer Advocate has it at 8.1, and Untapped has it at 8.1. So, evidently, this is, that's, all these three sites don't have the 2017 edition listed here. So, uh, this year's edition uh, is 7.9 percent. So, uh, bottle on date and ABV is handwritten on the label for 16.17. And it said he purchased at the brewery's bottle release event. And it was twenty dollars two weeks ago. They were limiting this to two bottles per customer since only 120 bottles were done of this. So small batch. Uh, for only that many bottles to be done. So, uh, hoping it's going to be a very tasty beer. Final beer of the evening for me, guys. Uh, and I brought out the big bottle so I could share the other half of the bottle with the other half. So, we'll see what this brings to the table. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. Uh, there's no commercial description. So, without further ado, let me get this big bad boy opened up and get it into the glass if I can get this opener underneath these great big these great big 750 milliliters when they don't have a cork in it and they put these great big monster caps on them it's hard to get the opener in there ah, there we go a little bit of a hiss not much all right let's get it into the glass here we go it says here it goes well with your chocolate dishes, of course. It's a stout, an imperial stout. Let's go down the center on this. Uh, digestive, dessert, the meat is smoked meat and grilled meat. 
And then we got enough head on that. So let me sip it in there just a little bit easier. There we go. Glass for a pint back in the time of snifter. Got my favorite snifter. So it's going to be selling for a long period of time. Being a, it's not a huge beer. I mean, 7.9%. It's not a 12 or 15%. So, uh, shouldn't knock you down. I mean, it's it's not like you're drinking rubbing alcohol or, or liquor or something like that. 7.9 is pretty conservative to me for a barrel-aged uh, Imperial Stout. Uh, about a finger of head on that pour. Over to the light. I'm not getting any at all. It's pitch black, guys. Looks really good in the glass. Let's get a nose to it. Definitely getting the bourbon. It's got a nice sweet candy smell. Chocolate, dark roasted malt. Hints of some dark fruit. There is a little bit of the alcohol. It is it's slight. It is so slight. But it's right out of the bottle at 40 degrees. I'm sure that's going to dissipate as it opens up and comes up the room temperature. A wonderful smell. I'm getting hints of some... Uh, Brown sugar and molasses. Awesome smelling beer. Very nice smelling beer. Mmm. Let's dive in. And the bourbon is not off the chain. It's not overpowering anything. Uh, I don't know how long they left it in the barrels. Uh, seems to have come together very well. And of course it's only been in a bottle. I mean, a month. Today is the 5th of May, and it was done the 6th of April, so right at a month. Uh, so, and like I said, this will keep for a while. I don't know if I'd keep it 20 years or not. It's not the huge ABV that you would want to keep a beer like this unless you just wanted to. Caramel, toffee. As, every time I put my nose to it, I'm getting something different. And, and the longer it's in the glass, the more it's going to open up. Let's dive in. I'm drooling. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Rico. Thank you, my brother. And for $20 a bottle, that's not very much. I mean, some of, some of these barrel-aged beers in this size bottle go for $25, $30, or even more. Very nice, guys. That's very smooth. The bourbon barrel is not overpowering every, everything in the bottle. Seems they haven't left it in the bourbon barrel a long, long time, I wouldn't think. Because a lot of times the, the bourbon just gets overpowering. And I don't have a problem with that. I like that big bourbon notes because I don't drink bourbon anymore. And that's the only way I can get that bourbon taste. But this just seems to be blended very well. And nothing is overpowering anything else. That's very delicious guys. It really is a tasty beer. Very easy drinking. As opposed to drinking a 12, 13, 15 percent version of this where it's going to knock you down. <laughs> I mean you're going to catch up, you're going to, even if you only drink half the bottle, you're going to catch a bottle top of it. And you guys have known that. When I drink those huge monster beers, I come back. I've got a buzz. Uh, it's, it's not that hard to tell a lot of times. Uh, I can't talk. And, and uh, you can tell when you're drinking a 7.9 or a 15%. Uh, the alcohol content, you're drinking two beers to one. So, but this one seems to be blended very well. So, let me sip on it for a little bit and then uh, finish up my Maduro wrap cigar that I have outside. I'm sure it will pair very well with this. And pour her a glass of this. I'm sure she'll love this. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Very well made beer. Uh, nothing is overpowering anything else. Everything is very smooth. Uh, the roasted malt. The caramel, the toffee, the, the molasses, some brown sugar, hints of a little bit of dark fruit in there, raisins or, or dates, a uh, little bit of the barrel aging in there, the bourbon is there, some vanilla, some woodiness. Very nice. Uh, and having the bottled on date, not a vintage or, 
or anything like that uh, carries a long way in my book, guys. Uh, I want to see all these breweries put a, a, a bottle on date on it. That, that is so much nicer than a Best Buy, a Joy Buy, a Used Buy, whatever buy. You might as well put that date on the bumper of the truck that's delivering the damn beer. Uh, that's and we know why they do that, to sell more beer. And that's what they're in the market to do, to sell as much of it as they can. If they're overproducing it, they'll put a six-month shelf life on it. If they're really overproducing it, they'll put even a longer shelf life on it because they want to sell this stuff. But if you're buying an IPA or a double IPA that's been sitting on a shelf six, eight months, will you buy it again when it's a malt bomb? So I just don't understand the thinking on that. Uh, if they think there's that many people in the world, enough suckers in the world, that, well, if this guy don't buy it, this guy here behind him don't know, and he will buy it, even though it's a six-month-old beer. So I do two thumbs up to the guys there at Gun Hill for putting a bottle on date on an Imperial Stout. So, uh, being very well done on top of that. So, uh, I did enjoy this beer. It is a great beer. If you don't, if you're, you're not a fan of the big, bold, bourbon taste on a lot of these bourbon out bourbon barrel aged beers this is a good one here because it's not overpowering everything else in the in the bottle very well done final chub very easy drinking for 7.9 percent very impressed with this great beer for the final beer of the evening or to share with some friends before dinner or after dinner as your dessert or to go with a nice chocolatey dessert. Very nice. Very well done. Guys, I'm probably going to get the grade on this. I think this is a 9 out of 10. It is very well done. As much as I like to have those huge off the chart, off the chain uh, bourbon notes on this one. This one is very well made. Very well. The bourbon is not overpowering everything. So, 9 out of 10 for me. Uh, numeric rating on this guy would be a 95. That's where I'm going to put this. Uh, over to uh, Beer Advocate. They said 88. I think it's much better than that. Everything is blended so well on this beer. Nothing is overpowering anything else. Very well done. Over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer has no score. Not 10 people have commented on this particular version since it was only done a month ago. Uh, I'm sure uh, I didn't look, but I will. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six people have commented, so they need four more people to comment on this before they'll put a rating on it. And our final check in, we'll run over to Untapped. They have it at 4.09, which I consider that in their A minus category. I could just as easy have done that, but I, there's no reason to do that. I mean, it is a very well-made beer, it's a very balanced beer, and nothing is overpowering anything else, and it's got the bottled on date on it. It's not just the vintage, not the year, but the month, day, and the year, so you know exactly when this was put in the bottle. So, that carries a little weight with me, guys. Uh, I want to see that on everything, month, day, and the year. That would be great. That would be super. And if you want to put the ABV and the IBUs on there, to me, that's top notch. That's all the information we need uh, to make an educated decision on whether we're going to buy their beer or not. So, they don't have the IBUs on this beer, but it's not critical on the style. It's not an IPA or a double IPA. But they do have the ABV and the bottled on date on it, and it's a very well made beer. So, I enjoyed this. Rico, thanks again, my brother. This was a very tasty beer, sir. Uh, guys, if you've had this one from Gun Hill Brewery, this is their barrel age version of their Void of Light. Very limited re release with only 120 bottles done and only $20 a bottle. A lot of them are a lot more expensive than that. You could pay at least another $10 or more for a lot of these uh, barrel age versions of Imperial Stouts in this size bottle. So, reasonably priced, 
excellent done excellently excellently well done beer as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, nine out of ten for me. I enjoyed it. If you've had this one from Gun Hill Brewing, their barrel aged version of the Void of Light, let me know what you think. Damn tasty to me. Come back tomorrow. Let's see what we dig out of the fridge. See everybody then.